Hey, yep. Right, in the park again. I'm just going to cut straight to the chase to try and make sure this stays as short as I can get it. Right, this little complicated drawing here uh, effectively represents a team, a multidisciplinary team, operating in a matrix organisation. So this is one team. And because most people are on more than one team, this team member here is on this team and that team. And for example, this team member is on that team and that team. Okay, so you end up with this web of teams. Imagine each team member being on different teams and you can hopefully see how it networks off from that. Okay, and that's the effect of the complicated structure that emerges from a matrix organisation. Now, what happens is, for example here, let's say this person gets ill. They're now no longer able to work in this team. That means is this team's under pressure. So what happens is, is this team member starts spending more time working with this team. Because that then has an impact on this team, puts this team under stress. So this team member now gets sucked into working with that team, which puts this team under pressure. So what can happen with this complicated web is that an event that happens in this team that maybe no one has ever heard of, they don't even know how this person's been ill, ripples through and impacts all the teams, all connected. Imagine the wider matrix there. Okay, and that impacts, so one small thing impacts. So imagine something happens to this guy, this person, this person, this person. See how imagine all the priorities can suddenly start changing very rapidly in this sort of unendingly complicated dynamic environment. Now we did try and create this master, master mega plan to manage all these dependencies so that we can make it a bit more predictable. But the plan became so complex no one could actually use it. <laughs> and then we came along with Brainwave, it was a fairly big left field step, which is this. Now, the best way to explain this left field trip is a little experiment that we've tried. Um, you could do it yourself if you want. So imagine this circle around the outside is a contained area, so it could be an office, it could be an area marked out on the floor. Each of these circles is a person. Okay, so you can have, for example, a project manager will be standing outside of the circle. Their job is to then get all these people walking. No one can stand still, they've got to keep walking, but they've all got to stay one and a half meters apart from each other. The project manager from outside of the team can direct everybody, telling them to go left, go right, go backwards, go forwards. So if there's about five of you, a project manager can probably negotiate everybody so they don't bump into each other. But let's add in a few more people, a few more people, and it's going to get very hard. The project manager is going to get overloaded. Okay, that's how it's traditionally run, with a project manager guiding people. Now the left field one we came up with is we thought, well hang on a sec, let's give each team member the same rule. Now what they've got to do, each team member has their own rule called stay one and a half metres apart from everybody you meet. They then wander around with this one rule guiding them. And of course it's much easier, they just walk around almost self-regulating, always keeping one and a half metres apart from the next person. This allowed us to add more team members in and more team members in and still the rule was maintained. Hopefully that's making sense. We even actually tried, and we did this real with real people, we even tried putting somebody in here that would only, would, would had a different rule, of half a metre, to get within half a metre of people. And what happened is, is the rest compensated their motions to stay one and a half metres away. So it's a very robust way of getting the team to effectively self-organise itself, was give them the one rule that they all adhere to. So we figured this was a, a style of, of, of running. So the project manager, by the way, still allocated what the work does, still controlled what the, what the, how the money was spent, um, but each team member had a one rule to self-organise, a self-organising rule, if you like. Now, of course, that created the potential, but what is that one rule? So that would mean every single one of our team members self-organise on one rule. And if they all did it, it would allow everybody to flex in this matrix structure. We spent a long time trying to work out what that one rule is. Um, and it ended up being what we now call it is a simplified choice. So it's a one rule mechanism, a single methodology 
for everybody to make choices, personal choices about how they deliver their work. It's a fairly simple rule that we've written down in our book called How to Simplify a Choice, not unsurprisingly titled. <laughs> and then the idea is each team member follows the exact same methodology, making their own personal choices. This then allows them, the one, this provides the one rule to self-organise. Okay, which, because of the self-organising nature, allows, for example, this team, team member goes ill, they automatically self-organise, automatically self-organise, automatically self-organise very, very quickly, according to this one choice rule. And that reduces the, the build-up effect, or the ripple effect, of one person being ill. Project manager stays in control, because they're still delivering the activities, they're still delivering work, and they're still controlling the money. It's just that the actual management of these interwebs, which is close to impossible anyway, doesn't need to be done, because that's been done by the one rule, being everyone following the wrong rule. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and I've really fast-tracked through it, conscious that these videos can't be very long. This is really one of my longer ones. Uh, but any questions, you can contact me. Um, and have a great day. Thanks a lot. Bye.